Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm joined, as I mentioned earlier, by the wonderful Nadia Samdani. And Nadia is a very special and interesting person. She is the driving force behind the Sabdandi Art Foundation, which she set up with her husband, Rajiv, in 2011, I believe. And Nadia and her husband, as part of the Sabdani Art Foundation, have also begun a wonderful initiative called the Dhaka Art Summit, which now I understand is in its fifth edition. Is that correct? We Absolutely. just finished our fifth edition, yes. Fifth edition. And really, there is the initiative, the impetus behind both of these projects is to highlight not only Bangladeshi artists and architects, but also regional ones. And they've really created Dhaka into this wonderful um, art hub and really put Bangladesh on the regional art map, I think, in really exciting ways. And Nadia will tell us more about how the foundation started, what was the driving force behind it. Nadia is also a fantastic art collector, and she started collecting at the very early age of 22. And I look forward to asking her more questions about that, how she started the collection, what pushed her towards that. She comes from a generation of art collectors, or second generation, rather. I know your parents were very interested in collecting as well. Um, Nadia's interests lie even further because she's actually on the boards of very important, well, the advisory boards of international museums and art fairs. The Tate Modern South Asia Acquisition Committee is just one of them. The Tate International, sorry, International um, Art Council as well. She's on the advisory board of the Dubai Art Fair and Al Sarkal Avenue's advisory committee, which deals with their programming as well. In addition to that, Nadia and Rajiv are one of the founding members of the Harvard University's Lakshmi Mittal South Asian Art Institute's Advisory Council, which is another very important initiative, partnering with one of the greatest universities in the world in sort of America. And I look forward to hearing more about that as well. In addition, the Samdani Art Foundation has lent and, um, parts of their collection to global art fairs and exhibitions around the world, including a very exciting project um, in New York at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, including Parasite in Hong Kong, including the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw. So it goes on and on and Documenta 14 as well. Additionally to their own collection being lent out, the Samdanis have also commissioned a great deal of work both for the Dhaka Art Summit and also for their own private collection. So really, Nadia, you and Rajiv are great um, patrons of the arts, like you know, traditional patrons have been. And it goes above and beyond just your own collecting. You've also been invited to speak at various panels and board meetings, as well as art fairs as well. I know that you spoke recently. So I'd love to hear from you a little bit more about everything that you've been up to both during the pandemic and over the last couple of years to bring you to where you are now, which is a really exciting place to be. So just to sort of start off, I mean, I thought we could ask a little bit about collecting because that's how you got yourself onto this journey, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So you started collecting at the early age of 22. And I know your parents were collectors, but what pushed you towards um, taking on this responsibility almost of building your own art collection? Well, well um, I've always had a passion for art and um, started collecting at an early age. And I started collecting with uh, Bangladeshi modernist mm. and um, because that was what I was most familiar with. And um, so that's how the journey started, collecting Bangladeshi modernist and slowly through um, I think through my own journey of traveling, um, exploring, visiting art fairs and uh, museums and biennials and documenta and all the various art events around the world, then uh, slowly I saw that my interests slide more towards contemporary. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how uh, the more I saw really, the more I learned. Um, that's how my taste developed over time, and um, it's just the more you know, the more you, the more you see, the more you learn. I don't have any um, uh, academic background in art. I never studied art. I studied economics and management. Hmm. So, um, so all I know about art is through actually um, seeing and learning. 
which honestly is sometimes the best way because you as the viewer must you have to be absorbed by a work and the more you see the more absorbed by the work that you become that's really the biggest education to see how you respond to it and i'm sure you started doing your own research at the same time as your taste developed as well as you move from bangladeshi modernist to contemporary artist and so forth did you have any favorites in your early years were there any particular pieces that really had an impact on you well i think um while growing up and even i would say still now one of my favorite um bangladeshi modernist is sm sultan Mm-hmm. and it still remains one of my favorites but um over time um i think i'm more um keen towards more contemporary art and artists of more of my generation uh whether it's bangladeshi or international so um it's um yeah and i like uh, a lot of um new mixed media works like a lot of video arts and installations and um different things It's interesting how your taste often I mean what you said about artists of your generation it's probably also because they've had similar experiences to you so perhaps you can relate a little bit more to those artists and what they've gone through what they're trying to say Absolutely absolutely the subjects are more relatable more current mm-hmm. and um Now that makes complete sense. And I also enjoy how your collecting has changed over the years, how it has moved towards a more contemporary, more technological as well in terms of video art installations, almost oh, more yeah. absorbing it's changed, pieces. It's changed so much. It's changed so much. I mean, through um collecting, I mean, right now, um what when uh Rajiv and I we collect, it's no longer we think that okay, you know, we're going to collect this to put it in our home. or um that you know it's going to go on this wall or that wall it's right it, now it's more like it's passion if we love it then um we we You'll get find it. a space it, for it yeah we'll find the space or we'll figure something out later on because over the years um i think we've collected um some some pieces that are so huge and um institution size pieces really mm. and uh, when we collected them like several years ago we never thought that okay what we'll do with it we always thought that okay we'll deal with it later we love it so much yeah um uh let's keep it but um so now what's happened over the years we've acquired so many amazing institutional pieces and it's a shame that you know we don't have a home where we can display such pieces because they're so large um that we um that now we're building a space to Wonderful. show the Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's excellent because then it can be built to the specifications of the work that you had and there's no reason to even worry about the work not fitting or going somewhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, very exciting. Well, I'm going to ask you more about that later. But I I actually had a little sneaky question to ask you. I wanted to ask how you met Rajib. Was he also interested in collecting at this point? Did he like yourself has to have his own collection? Well, Rajib and I met um through common friends and we were family friends. We're from the same part of Bangladesh, um which okay. is Sylhet. And our families knew each other for years. So, um we met like that. And when we met, he he did um collect, but very little, um not seriously. It's when uh we 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 got together, we had the same passion and we started um researching more traveling more for art and um yeah now and now we're both very serious and one thing we're both lucky is that we both have the same taste it's mm. rarely it happens that we have disagreements or we have uh different tastes in art so we're lucky in that way because usually with couples you know sometimes they have different tastes and it's like a big decision where the you know one person likes it the other person doesn't So uh we usually don't have uh much disagreement in that. That is lucky. Now if you did who do you think would get the sort of last word? Do you think you would be the deciding factor? Or do you if if you did? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I think so, but usually <laughs> I, well that hasn't happened as yet. Well, that's good then. 
And let's hope if it does, you do indeed get the deciding factor. But I wanted to ask you as well. So, you know, you're both collecting, you're a young couple, slowly buying up art. How did the idea of the foundation occur to you? Because that's a pretty big step to move from being collectors to setting up a foundation and really pushing it in an entirely different institutional sort of way, pushing the art, I mean. Yeah. So when we started collecting, it was just uh, we were collecting. And like I said, we were traveling quite a bit, traveling to different fairs and exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And um, one question that we always got is like, where are you from? And when people mm. heard you're from Bangladesh and you're a collector from Bangladesh, and you know, obviously the first question was like, what is the art scene like in Bangladesh? And mm. then you know, our response was, yes, it's a great art scene, lots of things happening. But then we realized that yes, lots of things are happening, but everything was happening locally. And there was no, um, nothing was happening internationally or the outside world wasn't getting access to Bangladeshi artists or Bangladeshi arts or um, things happening in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, we also uh, became friends with a lot of younger artists, um, contemporary Bangladeshi artists. And we realized that, you know, actually finding them is hard because in Bangladesh, we don't really have a gallery scene like mm. we have in the Western world or, you know, like, for example, some... Um, um, galleries and India and Pakistan where they represent artists. In Bangladesh, we don't have that. So the art infrastructure wasn't um, strong. So mm. that's when we realized that, you know, I mean, we have so many talented artists and we have so many friends abroad and so many curators and um, galleries who want to know about our Bangladeshi artists, but there wasn't a platform or there wasn't a space where they could find and research on them. That's how the idea of the foundation started, that we wanted to um, support Bangladeshi artists, introduce them to the international world where everybody could see them and have access to them. So that's why one of the main um, events of the foundation is the Dhaka Art Summit, which is mm -hmm. a biannual event. And basically Dhaka Art Summit is a non-commercial platform where it works as, it, it's, it's a platform where um, it's, well curated we work with um the best curators researchers they work for two years and they showcase this amazing um event the talk art summit where and the talk art summit we partner with the government of bangladesh the okay. cultural ministry and it's in the government building and the talk art summit everything we do from the foundation is basically free and open to all so the artists we support the um, event is free, free for everyone. And basically there's uh, what we have become like, uh, like uh, an abroad or internationally, we're so um, used to this VIP, um, uh, VIP culture. Like, you know, whenever we go to an art fair, do we have the VVIP pass or, you know, that kind of <laughs> yeah. you know this thing. So, but in Dhaka, in the Dhaka Art Summit, what we made is like, you know, art should be accessible for everyone because nothing is for sale. It's not commercial. Yeah. We wanted to make it um, um, available for everyone. Nobody should feel that, you know, this is not a place for me or mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't or intimidated. That's why it's in, in the um, Shilpapala Academy, which is a government building. And um, so, uh, so it, it happened over the years. I mean, of course, when we first started uh, the Dhaka Art Summit, it kind of started more of an experiment because we didn't have anything like this in Bangladesh. And we thought that, you know, we have nothing to lose. So let's try something like this and see what happens. And we have, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. We have so many friends, art world friends from around the world, and they supported us so much and it was, um, the response was brilliant and we just um, continued and it just got better. I mean, we learned every time from our mistakes. Like, And the summit, another thing is that we don't follow any particular model. The Dhaka Art Summit is our own model. Um, it's not like we follow the Venice Biennale or we follow, etc. Yes, different. I was going to ask about that actually because it is an unusual and extremely 
extremely good model for Dhaka in Bangladesh. I mean, I think it's that's what makes it so interesting and so accessible is that you have created this very site-specific art event that works for Dhaka and for Bangladesh, and you were bold enough to do that. How did you think about creating such an unusual and unique model? So uh, when we, for, like I said, the first edition was a more of an experiment, like to mm -hmm. see see what happens. And the first model when we um, said, uh, when we created the first Dhaka Art Summit, which was in 2012, it was only a platform for Bangladeshi artists because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we wanted to do. Our first support, our first um, priority is our Bangladeshi artists. So, and when we had this tremendous um, response, then we slowly moved to South Asian artists and then and then the next edition, it was like South Asian artists, but, you know, connected internationally. So a lot of diaspora artists and then slowly to international artists who have a connection with South Asia. So curatorially, so every time, because it's our own model. So every time we changed it in our own way, the way we wanted mm -hmm. to curate it and developed it because every time because we're also learning it's not like okay this is the model this is what we follow we're also learning in the process so every time we redo we do realize that okay we could have done this better okay next time we can do this better so um that's how it happened and now um it's amazing in like 10 years five editions later it's become one of the most important art events in the world and everybody knows it really has now dear it really, and really has. I mean, I was, you know, I was lucky enough to visit your last edition, so two years ago. And I have to say, I was completely blown away. It was so well done. I actually really liked how it was all in one building, which was an enormous building, actually. But you had different floors and you had invited great international curators, uh, ranging from uh, Devika Singh, who is now at the Tate, to Vali Maluji had done this wonderful exhibition on Iranian art, I remember. I mean, every single, and then you had this brilliant exhibition of Sri Lankan artists, as well as what I found very fascinating was an exhibition highlighting Bangladesh's uh, Biennales of the past, I believe, and I enjoyed that so much. So in just one edition that I attended, I saw several different massive exhibitions and I felt that I learned so much more about the art from the region than I had done while studying, while researching on my own, while going to different art events and galleries. It was just one really fantastic way of comparing and contrasting and just delving into the regional art scene. Yeah. Um, so. It um, so we, what we do is like we invite for each edition, we invite different guest curators. Like mm -hmm. you said, you visited the 2018 edition where we yes. had Devika, we had Vali, we had um, um, Cosman. So we have different curators. So every edition, so we try for our research with the curators, we try to get the best. And what happens is most of these curators are institutional curators. And mm -hmm. what is great for the local general public of Bangladesh is that because how many people can travel and go to Tate or go to MoMA or go to the Met? Very few. But yes. for us in Dhaka, you know, it's giving access that, you know, you have a curator from the Met who's curated an exhibition in Dhaka, which is that quality. And that's, you know, standard and uh, local visitors from Bangladesh get to visit this. And it's amazing that, you know, you get all these different perspectives and different theme exhibition all in one building. Exactly. And, yeah. and there's everything. So there's, we, we have like lots of performance, there's film screening, there's lots of talks, there's all kinds of things under one roof. So it's, it's like a festival. And in Bangladesh, it's become amazing that, you know, this is something that people put down in their calendar and it's something to look forward to um it's become so it's no longer although um we host this event the samdani art foundation hosts this event but this is no longer our event it's like the country owns it it's it's the public event the people own it and uh, that's really so special yeah so 
It's been amazing. It's been such a wonderful journey. And I wanted to ask you, so when the, I know that um, you have a chief curator as well, Diana Campbell Betancourt, and that she curates exhibitions for every single event. Um, and that's wonderful because then she selects, you know, regional artists, younger artists as well, and curates large shows around them. So the edition that I attended, there were many Pakistani artists, Indian, Sri Lankan, in addition to a lot of international artists and names as well. But I wanted to ask how involved you are um, personally in the curation or perhaps the setup of the, you know, the other curators, the guest curators who are also brought on board and the performances that happen. So, um, like I said, um, I don't have any background in art. Um, it's just pure passion. So Diana is our um, chief curator. She's the artistic director of the foundation. So in the curation, actually, we don't um, re interfere at all. Um, the curators, once the curators are selected, the curators are um, decided amongst us mm -hmm. who we'd like to invite. That's a, that's a, that's a decision that we take. But after they're invited, they have the full freedom to really decide on their show and everything. And one good thing is that, you know, we don't censor anything. We don't mm -hmm. really cut anything. I mean, whatever is possible, we try to do it as much as possible. Because, you know, at the end, we want a brilliant show. That's of um, course what our target is. And Nalti, I wanted to ask you, how have you seen Bangladesh's regional art scene transform since you first began the Summit and the Dhaka Art, uh, sorry, the Samdani Art Foundation? So have galleries now started popping up? Have institutions other than yourselves become more supportive of the art scene? And have younger artists or even middle-aged artists felt that they have more of a system to rely on that is supporting them? Because obviously, if you're partnering with the government, that's brilliant because it's a great way of bringing them on board as well. See, over the last um, 10 years, after we started um, the Dhaka Art Summit and the foundation, so much has happened. Now, I can say, like, every time I go to a fair or um, a Biennale or an exhibition, I see presence of Bangladesh which I didn't see 10 years ago before Dhaka Art Summit or before the Samdani Art Foundation. It was a very, very rare thing. So now there's presence, like, you know, um, there's presence of Bangladeshi art in major museums, in major um, exhibitions. People are now looking because they have access to it now. And these artists are brilliant. And um, now a lot of international galleries are representing Bangladeshi art. So before that wasn't the case, now they have access to it. A lot of, um, now they're getting written about, they're being invited to different places, they're being invited to a lot of residencies. So a lot of things are happening, a lot of positive things. And your question was, what's happening in Bangladesh? Unfortunately, the Bangladesh gallery scene has not really taken off, but mm. um, there's a lot of, um, artist-led initiatives who are doing their own thing. There's um, some uh, some foundations in Bangladesh that are coming up um, that are, you know, trying to support artists. There's lots of residencies going on, but um, but it's been a success that, you know, when we're, like, say, if we go to Fries or if we go to Venice or if we go to Documenta, there's presence of Bangladesh. So for us, that's that really is, interesting. That is what it and is. Look, that certainly is success. And I think it's also small steps in certain ways, you know, as artists begin, especially if they're taking on their own initiatives, that in itself is so exciting. I mean, the Kochi Biennale came out of an artist initiative. So I think artists also can move an art scene forward in so many ways. What has been your sort of, I mean, it's a little early, I wonder if I ask this later, but I'm gonna ask it now. What was your proudest moment so far? What do you think really has stood with you? I think the proudest moments are, you know, when we go into major museums, like, for example, the Met, and I see there's, you know, a Bangladeshi art artist work there. I think those are the, you know, if I'm walking into Tate Modern Museum, 
you know, there's a Bangladeshi artist there. So that, you know, we're no longer ignored. You know, I mean, we haven't, you know, our art scene, we have so many brilliant artists, but, you know, it's just that we have been ignored for so long. And mm -hmm. I don't think ignored is the word. I don't think people or curators or institutions, they didn't have access. Maybe to overlooked. It. Maybe overlooked, overlooked is a better right. word. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't have access to it. And now they have access. And I think these are uh, the proudest moments, really. <laughs> No, that is a really proud moment. Good for you. And also, and also I think um, the other interesting things is that, you know, when we're, um, say, um, you know, we're somewhere and we meet a lot of people and they're like, you know, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Bangladesh. And they're like, I've been to Bangladesh. And I was like, really? What, where, what did you do in Bangladesh? They're like, we went to visit the Dhaka Art Summit. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Wow. So, um, I think those are um, really uh, proud moments that, you know, there's so many people that um, we don't know that, but have visited Bangladesh to visit the Dhaka Summit. Because of you, really. Think about that. <laughs> and now, yeah, I also wanted to ask, you know, this sort of goes in line with the larger aims of the foundation and of the summit itself, but you're also on the boards of several advisory councils and institution, of institutions and major museums and different organizations. I wanted to ask a little bit about that process and sort of more about the goals that you personally have, perhaps while being on those boards. Have you seen real change occur during the time that you have been a member of those boards? You've already spoken a little bit about how Bangladeshi art is now part of the collections in the Met in MoMA, but it'd be great to get more information like that. Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. We saw um, so many, so many things like, you know, like before now, like, for example, when the Dhaka Art Summit happens, I mean, I, there's so many institution representatives come to Bangladesh to see the Dhaka Art Summit. And the purpose is for research, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, as you know, uh, when a museum acquires um, uh, a work, it's not like it just, it's like a three month decision. You know, these decisions take years to yeah. for one, one work for, for, for a work to acquire. So a lot of positive things, you know, there's numbers. It's not like, okay, there's been just like one institution that, that you know that I have uh, been a part of only that institution has been I think it's also like you know also institutions look at other institutions and see mm -hmm. what they're collecting so it's also kind of like seeing what is interesting and um, and there's tremendous interest and tremendous interest because you know several repeated visits from institutions from different institutions from actually around the world to the Dhaka Art Summit. And um, besides even Dhaka Art Summit, a lot of um, institutional curators come on their research trip, um, mm. which you know this, um, the foundation supports for their research and things like that. So obviously um, there's a really um, true interest because if that wasn't the case, I mean, this would, um, I mean they wouldn't come for research trips. Yes, as part of the summit, not only do you exhibit artists and have performances, but you also have a very strong research-oriented conference in a sense almost. I know the different museum curators and directors often present and discuss various topics as part of your educational um, aspects as well. So the year that I was there, I remember um, two of the directors of the Tate had also come. I think it was... Uh, Possibly Francis Morris was there that year. Oh, yeah. And I believe there I think, was also a director of MoMA. I think um, in 2018, um, uh, Maria Balcho, she also yes. was one of yes, our... Yes, she was uh, also there. ...with Di Diana. Yes. And I think in 2018, we had the in, um, Tate's International Council's um, uh, trip to Bangladesh. So there was like almost, I think, 50 or 60... Um, 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 members who visited uh, Wonderful. the top Yeah, it was one of, it, they had their annual trip. So we have an annual trip every year. So that, um, that year it was the Top Art Summit. 
Oh, that's so, how, how did how did they respond to it? Did they chat to you about it afterwards or? No, uh, I think they, they really enjoyed very, very positive response. And um, yeah, and they learned so much. So what we say to people is that, you know, you come to Dhaka Art Summit, it's completely different, different set of artists, because what we do is we don't really um, show um, the works which already you're, you've seen other places. We try to um, discover new names, more younger artists, or mm-hmm. even if it's, uh, we also commission a lot of work. So it's something um, different that you're seeing. So we say it's like a breath of fresh air. It's something new, it's something different. It's a place to discover artists. So a lot of people um, discover new artists. No, you're completely right. I wanted to get back to a point you had brought up earlier regarding the building that's being built for the Sandani Art Foundation and for the collection. Could you chat a little bit about that? Because I I do know, I mean, you've mentioned this earlier in an interview, I believe, that the home that you and Rajiv and your kids live in was actually then also built to house your art collection in addition to yourselves. Is that right? Um, Sorry, you mean for our home? Yes. Even uh, for your home, you had done that. So I'm very excited about seeing this new building that's being built for the larger art collection of the Sandani Foundation. So um, so our home, I mean, when we built it, this was about 10, 11 years ago. When we built it, we had, um, uh, we built it around art. But obviously in 10 years, so much has changed. Yes. Our tastes have changed. It's, um, we, we saw so much more. We learned so much more. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's our home. But, and the thing about our home is every 18 months, we rotate our art collection. So, okay. I mean, rotate as in we do a rehang. So it's curated in a way that um, it's... Um, we kind of like pick and choose of what we want to display and um, it's curated in that way. And, um, and like our, our new space that we're building, that's called, that's in Silet, that's the Northeastern part of Bangladesh. So that's where we're building our sculpture park and art center. And um, so that's coming up we're in construction phase so there's going to be um, residency there's going to be um, a sculpture park there's going to be housing um, our permanent collection which is going to be an exhibition space so a lot of things um, going to uh, will take place there Wonderful. How large is the permanent collection and what is the main um, focus? Like as you talked about international artists as well as Bangladeshi artists being in the Dhaka Art Summit. Does the foundation's collection also reflect that? Um, so, the, what, so the foundation's collection we say is the South Asian collection. Okay. And our collection, the personal collection is the international collection. And so the South Asian collection is um, where it's more research-based collection. So it's, mm-hmm. it's of course, a lot of Bangladeshi art and um, South Asian art, but it's more research. So, for example, I mean, of course, we do collect a lot of um, contemporary works, but like historical works, like collecting historical works is very important. Like, as you, uh, I mean, we were, we're a new country. And a lot of our um, collections, um, especially our modernist artists who are from, uh, who were there and most of their works, I mean, before Bangladesh was an independent country and was a part of East Pakistan. So a lot of our artists are um, from, uh, we try to collect works before um, 1971. And Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and those works mostly are not available in Bangladesh or in Bangladeshi collectors. So that requires a lot of um, uh, research, how to find them. And people Mm -hmm. obviously let go of these works. So those things and, you know, also kind of curating it in a way that, you know, say there's a Indian diaspora modernist artist or there's a Bangladeshi artist how they're related, how they thought the same way. And um, it's, it's, 
So that's how we collect it, and how they're and also how younger artists like are influenced by modernist artists. Mm -hmm. So it's a really a wonderful research source resource for new artists, new art historians as well who may not know about the vast history of art coming out of Bangladesh previously. So this collection we're also building not for ourselves but also for the future generation yeah. for the future for people to also research have access to it to know about it to learn about it and really bring it back um, and bring it in one collection so people have access to it and know about it mm, that makes and, uh, sense. the international collection is really um, our my Rajiv and my journey as collectors and that's really um, everything, really whatever we like. But uh, when we're when we're say um, putting the collection up, when we're hanging them, it's also curated in a way that you know, say this Italian modernist with this um, Pakistani modernist, how the connection is. So it's curated in that way. That makes sense because we often forget how many global events tie us all together and how a lot of the time South Asian artists were in Europe and inspired by European artists before coming back. So much was happening at the same time simultaneously that ended up affecting artists all around the world. So it's important to pull those strings together and tell that story. Yes. Do you have memories associated with every single artwork in your private collection? Do you often think about perhaps what you were thinking or which fair you bought it at or, you know, the artist studio that you might have visited? Every, for, for us, every single work has a story. Mm -hmm. Every um, single work has a story, has a memory, has um, lots of, um, some lots of waiting, some lots of things. Um, um, yes, definitely lots of memories. Nadia, do you have any advice for perhaps aspiring collectors, either regionally or globally, maybe they could be young or older who want to start collecting, what would you tell them to do? Follow their gut, follow investment, I don't know, everybody has different opinions about the best way to collect. Um, I, think, I think really to see as much as they can and um, learn about it and um, really collect what they like and not um, kind of like follow the trend or mm -hmm. kind of like follow that, you know, okay, this is a good artist or this is a big name. I think um, really follow the passion. And really, I, I think for me personally, it's like, I, I like more um, contemporary artists who are from my generation. Yeah. Um, those are more, um, I think for me, it's relatable. So I think to learn as much as possible and to see, travel, see, and see what um, really uh, makes them think. No, and it's true also in, well, I suppose COVID has highlighted this to us, these current times of being at home. But so much is also available on the internet for those of us who cannot travel. I mean, I know there are different, different museums have opened their collections online. They've put up images. They've put up entire backstories. A lot of research is online. So even that's a great starting point for those of us who perhaps aren't able to go to, you know, different global museums. I also wanted to start looking at some questions. And please forgive me if I miss any. My lenses have been bugging me today, so I can't read properly. Um, oh, but Nadia, I wanted to ask you on a personal level, what's next for you? What's been keeping you busy right now? And how do you see perhaps things moving forward for you personally? I think, um, well, last five months, I mean, we just finished our Dhaka Art Summit in February. And, um, before that, we were working, I mean, you know, to get on a show like this and to um, really, I mean, we were so busy. And um, right after the show, I mean, right after the Dhaka Art Summit, it, this lockdown happened. And I think, and all of a sudden, you know, you're like, I mean, you know, we've never, I mean, we've never, we could never imagine something like this and um, something like this to happen. And um, we were thinking like, what can we do? We're all stuck at home. And that's how our idea started that, okay, from sitting at home, what can we do? 
So we we came up with some initiatives we're doing from the foundation, which is one is um, art around the table. I don't okay. know if you've seen it. So I we're doing this. It. Yeah. So art around the table is basically uh, we part. Uh, it's oh, well over the last 10, 12 years, we've worked with so many artists, curators from around the world. So what we were doing is art around the table. We've partnered with a local foundation called mm -hmm. Jago Foundation. It's a foundation for, um, it's, a, it's actually a foundation and it's a school for street children, um, slum kids. And we partnered with them and we invited um, different artists, curators to do like little um, workshop videos for us. And in return, whatever fees we would give them, they would they, they have agreed to generously donate it to Jago Foundation. So it's like, you know, it's also um, feeding our community. We're supporting our community. And at the same time, we're getting these amazing workshops and videos to do at home with our families and um, nourishing our minds through these. That's wonderful. And I know that you've also started your own series of conversations. You had mentioned this to me when we were talking the other day and that they're primarily in Bengali. Is that correct? So you've been getting Bengali speakers to speak about different topics to really keep the language alive and make it, you know, make it ac as accessible as possible. Yeah. So every Thursday, we um, every Thursday evening, um, we invite um, uh, a speaker and it's different speakers, like whether it's an artist or curators or researchers doing different um, researches or they just present their works. Um, and we have, it's over Zoom, it's a private um, okay. Zoom invitation, but we have like great um, amounts of speakers and it's really casual and it's open. You get questions, you can ask questions. We invite a lot of people. so. Um, it's quite nice. It's been really good. That's actually like one of the highlights um, of my week, actually. I'm sure you must also learn so much from these speakers okay. and their experiences. You know, we had a really great question that I saw just a little bit earlier, which I think is quite special. Uh, they're asking about the last piece of art you acquired. And I think that's a really special story. Um, so if you could chat about that. Um, okay, last or, or, or a recent piece, whichever, like recently or the last, whichever one you're more comfortable talking about. Okay, so recently at the top of my head that I'm thinking, um, we acquired, actually it was a commission piece by this um, Korean artist called um, Hegyu Yang. Hmm. And it is a very large size um, monster made out of bells and it's a it's a kind of like a music piece so you can it's very large i think it's like eight feet tall oh, wow. um, and the entire thing is made out of like little balls uh, um, bells sorry i'm saying balls mm -hmm. like bells like um and when you shake it you can and it's got wheels at the bottom you can push it around you can shake oh, it wow. and um yeah it makes um beautiful um, sound and is it programmed to make a particular kind of sound or is no, it quite no, no. fluid you just, shake it. you just shake it it's like an instrument too lovely i i personally really like sound works i don't know whether you feel the same way but i find art that deals with sound or uses sound very soothing and particularly powerful do you have several sound pieces as part of your collection I have lots of sound pieces. <laughs> I also now that I now that I think of it, I have um, we have a sound piece, which is by a Mexican artist. His name is Pedro Ruiz, and it's it's actually a violin, and it's made out of destroyed guns. Okay. And um, yeah, and it's uh, it's a, it's a functional violin. So yes, we have a couple of um, 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 sound pieces. Well, I wanted to ask you if you have a favorite piece from your collection, but I think that's not fair. So we can skip that question. <laughs> that <is> not fair. <laughs> I think artwork like is sometimes like your babies. 
Which child is your favorite? <laughs> I have to tell you, Nadia, I'm pretty sure all parents are favorites. I know they all pretend <laughs> not to, but I think at the end of the day. <laughs> they have favorites, you don't say it. <laughs> yes, they don't say it, but they definitely have them. <laughs> By the way, if you'd like, you can also scroll up and down through the questions. Um, just in case I miss something that you would like to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this, um, this is an interesting question. Both Dhaka Arts Summit and the Sandani Foundation are very focused on promoting our artists and artworks. How do you keep on evolving even if you say, face critical times? So I suppose very related to the times right now, how, how do you see the foundation perhaps in evolving either post-corona times or even in this current moment? I mean, you've spoken a little bit about that, but it'd be great to hear about more. Um, well, I mean, the, it, this is like the most uncertain times of like, you know, probably our generation. So, you know, of course we're trying to work, I mean, because, you know, the social distancing and you have to work from home. And so that's how we've come up with Art Around the Table. We're doing also this other, because, um, we're also doing this other um, initiative, which is also Art Around the Table. It's part of the Art Around the Table, where we're doing studio visits of artists, which are paid okay. studio visits of, for younger artists, and where it's, it's mostly for the curators for research. And we give them a fees, and they give, um, like, they give a tour of, the, of their um, portfolio. I mean, basically, it's a studio visit, but through online and... Um, that has been going really well and um, and for research phase purpose because no curators, nobody's traveling now. So um, we're doing these things, we're trying to adapt and um, with these new ideas, but hoping this will come to an end soon. This pandemic will come to an end and I can't wait to meet people and physically <laughs> visit artists and museums because you know, I mean, of course, virtually, we're seeing galleries virtually, we're getting all the portfolios and um, museums, but it's not the same. I mean, for me, um, I want to go to a museum and experience the artwork, experience the installations. Um, and I not agree. Look, not look at it on my screen. No, it's completely different in person. You're completely right about that. I wanted to ask you a little bit. Um, so the Dhaka Art Summit is every two years. And I know that you have curators who come and spend two years doing research. What does the foundation do in the meantime? Do you also have other initiatives that you're doing during that two-year period? I'm afraid we didn't touch on those at all. And we have very little time <laughs> left. But it would be great to hear about that. Yeah. We have, uh, we do actually quite a bit. So we have um, something called Samdani Seminars, where okay. we have, so throughout the two years, we have a lot of um, visiting um, curators, artists, um, um, pro art professionals, do a lot of workshops with our younger artists. So those are again, open for all free, we do a lot of performance workshops. We have closed door workshops, a lot of things. So we're doing things like that. And then um, of course, uh, we've been, all these years we've been gearing up to our residency, the Sri Hatta oh, Sandani yes. Sculpture Park. So that's also coming up. So once that is actually um, ready, um, there'll be a lot of programs and but besides that we support a lot of exhibitions a lot of residencies and uh, different things the residency program is it going to be sort of open to everybody we or will it be more regional more bangladeshi how are you envisioning that moving forward um, it's going to be open for all and uh, we're still working on the program but it's going to be mm. open for all and not just um, art, but it, we want um, the um, Samdani Sculpture Park to be an art um, cultural center. So we want music, we want architecture, um, all kinds of like kind of like a holistic cultural hub. 
which is so oh, important the in other these thing, times. The other hmm. thing we do is we have we support, um, well, uh, as I mentioned before, um, um, artist-led initiatives. So in Bangladesh, we we are with uh, twelve artist-led initiatives, which we support. Um, we give them a fund. They do exhibitions throughout the year, and um, like mentoring them, supporting them helping them, things like that. This is so important, the work that you're doing. I mean, already in just a few short years, I already feel that you've transformed the regional scene here. I can't wait to see what actually ends up happening once you've opened the sculpture park and the residency center. I think it's all quite exciting. How do you feel having reached this point? I mean, when you were just starting off with the very first Taka Art Summit, did you ever imagine that this would be the kind of playing field that you are now dealing with? No, I had I had no idea. It just happened. I mean, we were passionate about it. But um, one thing I believe that, you know, if you are passionate about something, it really works. It really works because I, I feel I myself are a big example for people who want to do art things and, you know, I'm not sure or that hasn't happened. I think we, the Samnani Art Foundation, Dhaka Art Summit is a huge example and that it can be done. You just mm -hmm. need to be passionate about it. Just focus, not give up. I mean, of course, we've been criticized. We've done things wrong. But, you know, we said that, of course, criticism is good. It'll just help us be better and work harder. Exactly. Do you have a... Is there a particular summit that really stayed with you for either great reasons or terrible reasons? Was there ever one year that you thought, okay, this, you know, the lessons that we learned from this or the progress that we made on this summit edition made it really stay in your memory? I think every time, every time it's different. I mean, it's every time I think we get more and more ambitious, like one mm. edition to the other edition, we just have like more energy that yes we can do it and we can do it better and we can get more and more ambitious for us and they're always very relevant topics i remember the last one was about the environment and ecology so you're also moving along with the times just as art does that's that's our brilliant curators they're yeah. really uh, they're amazing and um uh, we're lucky that, I, I mean, uh, we are lucky that we have an amazing team that work at the Talk Art Summit and we all have the same passion. We're a young team, super energetic, and uh, our vision is the same. We want it to happen. We want to make, make, it a, make a difference. No, that is really, really lucky. And so, and, well, it's not rare, but it's always a miracle and a joyful one when people like that do meet and move forward with the same ideals and same goals. Yeah, absolutely. Is there something that you still would like to happen that you maybe have not started working on yet or that you know there's a long-term plan? If you can share that with us, that'd be exciting. Maybe a hope that you think, oh, maybe it's not possible. Well, right now we're just focusing on our stilette space, the sculpture park and art center. And I think and our hope and our dreams is that that will one day become um, a, a place to visit worldwide. Everybody from all around the world would just go and visit. Like, you know, we do sculpture parks around the world, whether it's Storm King, whether it's Inochim, whether it's Yorkshire Sculpture Park, all these parks. Um, Silet should be a destination with brilliant art um, where it should be, or we want it to be a destination. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's our aim. Let's hope so. When do you plan to open it? I know COVID probably delayed everything quite a lot, but is there a sort of time period in mind? Well, we'll see. You see, these sculptural parks, I mean, they take time. It grows over time so you know we we had planned that we'd open phase by phase because it's not possible to open the whole park at one go at once. It's ready. Mm. so it developed so we were planning to open the first phase probably uh, mid next year 
but um, it's kind of delayed because the construction has slowed down and um, so let's see let's see right let's now see if our fingers have- crossed Nadia, thank you so much for this. I don't want, I, mean, I keep on, keep talking to you and hearing even more, but we have about a minute and a half left. So I wanted to take the time to thank you properly and thank all of our audience for, you know, looping in, listening in, asking such great questions as well. It was really such an, a pleasure and an honor to have a chat with you and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.